375 million years ago, the world was full of fish. Then came a series of environmental disasters that changed everything. Oxygen levels dropped, global temperatures shifted, and 75% of all marine life disappeared. This was the late Devonian extinction and it wasn't a single event, but a slow, drawn-out collapse that opened the door for a major evolutionary shift, the rise of the tetrapods, before the extinction, most vertebrates were confined to water. But a few lineages, strange, lobe-finned fish with lungs and strong fins, had begun exploring the muddy edges of freshwater habitats. These were the stem tetrapods, like Tiktaalik and Acanthostega. They weren't land animals yet. But they had traits that would prove useful in a post-extinction world, once dominant marine predators vanished, these semi-aquatic pioneers found a new frontier on land. With fewer competitors and fewer aquatic threats, early tetrapods began to diversify. They developed stronger limbs, more flexible necks, and lungs capable of long periods out of water. Over millions of years, they radiated into swamps, rivers, and forested wetlands, places where fish were now rare, and opportunities were wide open. This radiation wasn't just about spreading out. It was about invention. We see new adaptations like digits replacing fins, internal nostrils evolving for better air breathing, and sensory systems adjusting to life above water. Some groups returned to the water with more power than ever. Others ventured farther inland. By the early Carboniferous, tetrapods weren't just survivors, they were explorers. Amphibians took over riverbanks. Early amniotes laid the first waterproof eggs, breaking the final link to water. And from this explosion of forms came the ancestors of every land vertebrate alive today, including us. So what caused tetrapods to radiate? It wasn't just an accident. It was a classic case of evolutionary opportunity. An extinction cleared the stage. And those who were ready, even partially, stepped into the light.